it's starting soon. We're live going to chill for a few minutes. Okay, cool. Perfect. Thank you, Sarah. I think I can hear you <laughs> typing, by the way. Yeah, everyone can hear us on the stream right now. Oh, which they is can? Fine. Oh, cool. Okay. What's cool. up, everyone? Hollywood! All right, I'm going to mute myself. We're getting... I don't see any comments. Alright, we'll get this party started. Oh, Bevan's in the debug menu. Yes, yes I am. <laughs> I, love it. I told you, I love Hollywood. It. Oh, Everybody okay. likes seeing how the, the spaghetti gets made. <laughs> That's how they say, right? Right, yeah. Well, uh, welcome everyone to the live stream tonight. I'm Sarah Abair. I'm the marketing director over at Flight School Studio, and I'm here with my pal Bevan. Bevan is yes. himself. Hi everybody, I'm Bevan Blocker. Uh, I'm an animator, or lead animator over at Flight School, uh, and I did all of the animation in the game so i'm here to happy to kind of show it off and i'm so grateful that bevan bevan has jumped in at the last minute into our live stream site because originally we planned to stream with Bo, and Bo is sick so we yes. gave him some time to rest so i hope Bo is not watching this and that he's in bed resting yeah. after it's a like big a, long it's kind of like getting chicken wings instead of eating a salad that's basically what we're yeah. getting tonight so oh no you know. i don't know we're gonna try our best, and uh, Mel Ramsden, our technical game designer on Stonefly, is gonna join us later this evening as well. She's actually doing a really cool interview right now, so she's gonna yeah. be running a little late to join us. Um, but you've got me, and you've got Bevan, we've got a bunch of buggos, and uh, I'm actually really excited to talk to you, Bevan, about the bugs in the game, yeah. because um, I'm trying to get good at Stonefly, okay. and I think you Admirable. have gotten pretty far in the game over the over the past couple days right yeah i beat it on the day that it came out because i couldn't stop myself so <laughs> i don't know that's if that's great. skill or obsession but regardless i did get through it and i, I feel like i got better so Are i got something i can show you and obsession kind of the same thing though like one of the I same know. i don't know i think it all depends on if you end up winning a nfl championship or if you end up robbing a small bank i think it's <laughs> <laughs> you know, it depends on yeah. which side of that level you end up at. So. so I wonder if we're going to get championship rings. Is that what you're telling me? Like after the live stream I mean, site, we'll get like big rings to wear. We, we, can, maybe we, we can get rings made, you know? Right. Yeah. I we want one that's just, a, just like a big boom ling, right? Uh, like, honestly, I mean, look, I keep on saying we need merch. So, you know, <laughs> we can start at championship rings and then move down to plushies that seems like a good logical evolution you know yeah i like it i like it um so our goal this evening is to get in some bug encounters yes and talk a little bit about how you and i tackle bug buggos mm -hmm. not bugs buggos in the buggos game. <laughs> yes um and also bevan i think your mech uh that you had yes. earlier was sick i think it was i hope that i can make it again because i think it may have gotten wiped out oh. uh i know we'll have to see i do we'll love this guy though um uh, actually it would be fun to show all the customization anyway so i'm just gonna do some debugging because it's kind of fun to look yeah. at yeah anyway. so uh, I, I one of my favorite things about working with development teams is that i get access to debug tools like this that let yeah. me like you know, unlock everything in the game or like jump around anywhere in the game that I want to. And I keep saying like developers should like make us pay extra to have those debug tools to play with. I would play so many more games. <laughs> oh yeah, no. I mean, basically what you're asking for is a game genie. That's really what it is. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> I want a game genie, genie for every game. <laughs> Sarah just wants to cheat. That's basically, that's the answer yeah. here. 
<laughs> yes, I, I don't have time to play everything. And man, I love this idea uh -huh. from the chat of a Boomling hoodie. I may have to like, oh, DIY yeah. and make that myself. That is such Why a not? great idea. I love the it. little legs like hanging down on it. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah, that'd I mean, be so cute. It just feels like it's just money that's waiting to get put in our pockets there. You know, <laughs> we got to do it. Oh, no. So I want to point, I'm, point I'm, out, Bevan, yeah. that you're playing um, a later game stage. Yes. And, and you're dying a lot right now. Yeah. But I believe yes, I in am. you. Thank you <laughs> and very I much. I love I didn't this know chapter. I impress people. <laughs> no, no. We're just, we're just here to hang out. And my dog's <laughs> here. My dog's here. Noki's here. Hi, Noki. Um, and finally, Nightbot has joined us in the chat. I'm very excited that that's working. Yes. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite levels in terms of look. Um, I love mm -hmm. the colorway in it. I just think it's so beautiful. This is a perfect opportunity. You're talking about us fighting a bunch of bugs. Uh, this is one of the arenas that you find where you find particularly valuable resources. It looks like it loaded one of my old designs, which I'm actually pretty happy about. Uh, so I'm going to drop uh, that, which blows these guys up into the air, makes them like ripe, ripe for the picking. Of course, you know, every all the names for stuff get changed right before the game goes out, so I have no idea what the official names are off the so, top of my head, even though I played eight hours of this, so... Yeah, I think what we have on screen now are yeah. a couple of higher-level Boomlings. Yes, and Boomlings, Boomlings shoot projectiles that will totally kick you off of the arena, but also the cool thing about Boomlings yes, projectiles is that right you can use the projectiles against other bugs. Oh yeah, no, they'll absolutely mess up anything that gets hit by them. <laughs> Um, yeah, pretty so you much, just got sued by a boomling too. I did. There's different <laughs> status effects with each one. This one here, it prevents my wings from opening. I can't fly until it shakes off of me, which I have, you know, I upgraded the ability. I, I mean, I unlocked all the upgrades for this to make it to where that goes away quicker. But earlier on in the game, when you get, you know, gooed like that, it really disables you for a while. And staying on the ground makes you incredibly vulnerable. Oh, shoot. Yeah. What are I these do... puffer guys called? Oh, What's goodness. They are popcorn fleas. Oh, shit. And, and the popcorn fleas like. are my least favorite bug in the game because I just I have a really hard time finding them. So, Bevan, I want to know what your tactic is. Pretty much. They're in, they're in the air, and you're supposed to be in the air. I like to, I mean, it, you know, if they hit you, you're done. But I like to uh, lure them in low. Let me see if I can get them down. And then jump high and bomb them from above. Uh, that's what I like to do. Yeah, they had that also big get strong gust of wind. See, <laughs> so yeah, bounce so again to them mess you up. But. I think there's there some go. prioritization sometimes in these arenas where you have to oh, figure totally. out like what bug is the most immediate threat and take those guys out first so you can really focus mm -hmm. on the lower level ones. That and, you know, like knowing these boomlings are going to face me and they're going to throw their stuff off, or they're going to throw their pods, I can throw down the uh, gravity orb there. Uh, let me find the actual names for stuff so instead of just like saying it off the cuff here uh where are those moves those guys are boomlings but they have no like no no the, the move that special uh the, this uh black orb the gravity orb oh, here it pulls their wings pull. forward yeah yeah just the pull it's the a pull higher move. level I love that. that is essential I, I did not learn that you can use like a, a gust of wind or pull uh -huh. to open up the boomlings wings until yeah. i watched pro play the other day so that's a really great move if you're desperate to like get a bunch of boomlings off you can pull mm -hmm. wind and open their wings and then they'll be immediately vulnerable for you to flip over well that and the boomlings will always they'll they'll want to face you no matter where you are so it's a good opportunity to lure them all to be looking in the same way drop one of those off so that you can you know get more than one at a time because otherwise you're just going to be sit there you know stuck uh Doing the doing the same thing over when you could be clearing the room more and getting more minerals, you know. Yeah, yeah, That's, and so uh, you're fighting my second least favorite bug in the game. Well, you just took them all, all out. The uh, jumpers, which I can't remember the oh, names yeah, yeah, yeah. actually in the game, um, but they jump up in the air. There's they're spiders, so they have these like mm -hmm. long arms that then get splayed out and they spin around. So like they're another one of the enemies that get up in the air and they really like do a bunch of damage when you're up in the air. Mm -hmm. So you no, gotta really, really time mess me up. jumps. Yeah. Yeah. No, they. I, I think that they have kicked me out of the arena more than maybe the the bull beetles as well. I'm not even sure. 
but they have definitely messed me up more than I care to admit. So, you know. I feel that way too. I'm actually yeah. going to pull up my cheat sheet for all of yeah. the bugs. Do it. So I That'd can be great. tell everyone their proper name. We gotta. This is our game. We gotta know the names of things, you know. I know. Oh, I'm so excited. Mel's here. Look, oh, really? Look there she is. <laughs> It's Finally! <laughs> it's a shot of adrenaline to the chest of this stream, am I right, everybody? <laughs> She's <laughs> okay. oh, wait, no, to go. Boom, baby! I'm here. Hello. <laughs> Boom! Is this is Cusco from Remper's New Groove. <laughs> Come in, do a little dance. <laughs> Welcome, I'm, so excited. <laughs> no, no. I'm so excited! No, I'm so excited that you're here, Mel. We, we have jumped right into one of my favorite levels of Stone Fly yes. to talk a little bit about bugs and strategies. You are so we were in just... the scout! <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about jumpers, and we were trying to remember the final name for them in the game, because we also call them jumpers. Oh, <laughs> right. Uh, they're something spider or something? Yeah. They're Star kind of spider. Something? Star spider? I'm not sure. I'm I'm pulling up my cheat sheet. It's important. I made a cheat sheet so I could memorize them all, and then I didn't <laughs> do my homework, y'all. <laughs> I wasn't very good in school, and maybe that's why. <laughs> We're in the arts. <laughs> they are oh, star spiders. That's my favorite. Star, star spiders. spiders. Nice. Yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah. shoot. This well, that's good. true, Gavin. We can. It is our game, and we can call them whatever we want. <laughs> but <laughs> we did call yeah, them star spiders. Much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Bevan, you, you've got a, a whole gang of hook wasps on you right now. And yes. You, you I really like the hook wasps a lot. I like the the stick and sting that they do. And these beetles will absolutely mess me up. So, yeah. I got to stay out of their way. Uh, lure them in to some strikes so that they're vulnerable. Ah! Oh! See? And then I get hit by a fighter. Oh. Ah! Get chomped. Oh, shoot, my wings are messed up, so I have to jump around. There we go. Oh! Fall until you can heal. Where are the boomlings? Oh no, not the boomlings. <laughs> there we go. Come on, guys. Neat indeed, Gavin. Get him. <laughs> oh yes, I love the lure. It's just such yeah. a good kryptonite for these guys. The little heart. I know, I it just... kind of kills me. I feel bad. It's adorable. There is um, some discussion happening about whether or not it is uh, ethical to push the bugs over. And, oh, of I course mean, it is. It is... The, the thing that I did a little bit of, like, um, considering while I was, uh, like, talking about um, what happens to the bugs when uh -huh. you knock them over, because bugs can reach terminal velocity, but their mass is so small that it doesn't actually injure them when they hit the <laughs> ground, because they're so light that the wind yeah. pushing up against them as they fall keeps their velocity at such that they won't actually, like, splatter when they hit the ground. So you're now, not up that high. What's your policy on drowning? Uh, that's what I'm doing here. All of these guys are great swimmers. Yes. <laughs> yes. I agree. I agree. <laughs> this is the real physics of Stonefly. Yes, this is the deep <laughs> stuff that you wouldn't learn anywhere else. This is else. the deep lore. The deep bugs. lore. Oh, yeah. From, from the chat, most bugs float. That's so, true. That's a very that's good fine. point, Gavin. Thank you. I, I think they're, true. they're just hitting the water and, you know, floating away gently. Yeah. Yeah. To a place where there's probably more minerals and less mechs trying to steal it. So I yeah. hope so. <laughs> Something tells me that the mech, the mech uh, running crowd in this world is in the vast minority of population in this world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's definitely more bugs than there are people, just oh, like in are. our world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fortunately, the size difference is not the same because I don't think I can handle <laughs> this. If I'm being completely honest. Yes, I don't know well, that I'd be able to handle. A biter the the size of me, although no. I would be very happy if I could hug a boomling, a big yes. Boomling. Oh, I yeah. bet that they're soft, pretty much like everywhere. They're just like a giant soft boomling. Oh, like the, ah. yeah, like a big squishy caterpillar. Yeah, like the oh. like the thing. You know, if you go to a lake and you jump on that giant inflatable, <gasps> you know. Oh my you could god! Get launched out in the water, that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. what I imagine. Like. If that's what a boomling feels like. I think it's like when a Pokemon trainer has a Snorlax. You know what I mean? Yeah! Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> a statement are... Pokemon. You know? Th yeah. That's a lifestyle Pokemon. That's <laughs> absolutely true. All right. Uh, I so will I'm going say, to... I'm a collector of fascinators. Right? Like, Ooh. those things that go the in your head. Yeah, the little hats. And I oh, would yeah. love 
I, lo I would love one of a, a star spider, aka oh. a jumper. Like, I think that'd be really cool. I might try to make one. Why not? <gasps> yes, Do please. It. If you make one, send me pictures because that yeah. sounds amazing. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> But now oh, I'm also go. thinking, like, this I'm, yeah, this is a really gorgeous part of the game. I just think the everything that is close to the camera and far away from the camera really lines up nicely here. Colors are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I the love movement the color in the background. Palette. Yeah, it's just so pretty, and I love <laughs> the mushrooms. Yeah, like that was honestly. I mean, I don't want to. I don't like to play favorites, especially when it comes to level design. But I had so much fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Just laying down mushrooms every which way. Like the sheer volume of mushrooms in this zone is a is both me and Adam's fault. Like Adam would set dress, and then I would come back in and add a couple more. <laughs> like we would just <laughs> constantly like seeing how many mushrooms we could get into this area. I love mushrooms. I lo uh, this design specifically. What's the IRL mushroom that this kind of mimics? You know, oh, you get them in like sock. Wait, in Noki? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or I Inoki? love them. Inaki, Inoki, whatever they are, they're delicious. I'm gonna yeah. go um, with Inoki because it I think sounds it's like Inoki. my bell. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Inoki. Inoki. <gasps> it's like a little mushroom. <laughs> Ooh, hello. He was I'm on the stream earlier. That I haven't found in the game. <laughs> He's just making his presence known. Oh, here are these Excellent. guys. Oh, these I'm are one of your favorites, one. right? Yeah. The gotta go fast bugs. The gotta go fast buggers. They are just so cute. Yeah, these engine grooms are really cute, but they are probably third in my ranking of least favorite buggos. <laughs> the fight, yeah. yeah. They wow. are finicky. Wow, I think so uh, some interesting, Ooh. like, uh, kind of evolution happened while we were designing the AI form. So it's essentially like, we need a bug that's going to charge you. That was like his, his yes. initial function. That was what we needed. So that was what we started with. And then as we were building out the AI, we realized that, like, after the, the engine grub charges at you, um, it was pretty easy to destroy them because they would just kind of try to reposition and do it again. Uh -huh. So that's when we started figuring out, like, what if the engine grub is very non-confrontational unless it thinks it can get away with it? <laughs> and oh. so it'll just avoid you as much as possible until you land, uh, and, you know, for a long enough time where it thinks it can hit you, and then it'll try again. So the gameplay around Scabber. that kind of turned into, like, baiting the engine grub into running into other bugs by strategically landing after you've chased him off to a spot where he's got a good, you know, straightaway this charge This guy right you. here. <laughs> Boom! And then yeah. running over the party worm, I see. There you go. There we go. Uh, Wait, yeah. did you call him a party worm? The yeah, party worm. that's the only wor name I know for this guy right here. I just call him the party worm because whenever I animated him, I just imagine a techno beat playing inside their body. <laughs> where it was just like, like literally, like everywhere they went, it was just like a muffled, like, you know, it just I felt right. It. I don't know why. I, it's not I that it, it is, but it felt right. You know, I love that. I love this question from the chat. What was the idea for this game? Because this game looks like so much fun. I can't mm. wait to get it. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, man, I wish Bo was here for this question. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, from, like when I understand it, Bevan, feel free to, to mm -hmm. chime in uh, as well. But uh, Stonefly was kind of um, uh, like a story that uh, Adam and Belinda wanted to tell uh, mm -hmm. set in a world that was kind of different from Creature in the Well but had a different kind of element which would uh, wind. So Creature in the Well had a lot of you know electricity and Stonefly has a lot of wind elements. So a lot of the game started around the idea of like wind mechanics and how that would work in telling the story of Annika Stonefly and mm -hmm. You know, wanting to make the desire to make a tiny person in a forest, like a fern gully type of scale, is like, I think that's just a good idea to start with. Oh, of course. <laughs> I mean, it's also just, you know, there is there's something in the basic love of loving mechs, loving bugs, like that kind and of nature. arena style combat and nature in general. I mean, that's one of the things that, I, I mean, this is the first time I'm really play or the day it came out was the first time I've really played it as a whole experience you know mm -hmm. and it was wonderful to get lost and lose time in something that we created and just be like oh I've been patrolling for a very long time and the music is perfect and it's like I have these moments of action or or not you know yeah. it's still non-violent yeah. and like the sweeping away I don't know it's really 
it, it just feels like the world really came together in a beautiful way and it's been really nice to see you know because yeah. really I, I feel like I, I only really I finished my part of it and I immediately moved on to a, a separate project and I didn't get to see this like final final until literally right. when it came out so I don't know it's really cool seeing that um, yeah as for the inspiration like I mean, I really think a lot of it, at least the little, I don't want to speak for anybody, but knowing Adam and understanding how he could get really pulled into the aesthetic, you know, of this like small world with these, you know, elements that we just love, which is cool mechs that you can customize and, you know, who doesn't want to ride a really cool hot rod around a massive yeah. forest, <laughs> you know? Um, uh, I think that my things didn't unlock, but whatever. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I hope that answers the question at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think way. so. Yeah, I think that's great. I, this and this is another point. really great question in the chat. Which element mm. will be the theme for the next game? So, oh, wow. I uh, I don't think I can discuss at length at this time, but we are definitely going to... Uh, there is de we're going to pick one. Yeah, there's gonna, there's <laughs> there will be, be game. a game. <laughs> and we're going to try it out. Um, we have some ideas cooking, so, you know, keep your eyes on our... Uh, Social media is in the next so, few years. Yeah. <laughs> so, in the coming months and weeks. Yes. <laughs> Very yeah. ambiguously. But yeah, I, yeah. like what are the elements? <laughs> They're like earth, wind, fire, water, heart. 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 Can't forget about heart. God um, damn it, Gavin. Sorry, I shouldn't swear. That, <laughs> missed opportunity. The element of surprise. <laughs> ah! uh, I love it. I love it. And someone from the chat also says pick aluminum, which I, is technically element. an element. Is good. Yeah. I, I love that. It's like it. the idea of steel type Pokemon inspired me so much as a youngster. Like being able oh, yeah. to incorporate steel as gameplay. Love it. I know it was just themed yeah. like attacks, but that could translate to so many different things if you take inspiration. Well, it's still, you know, of course. It, it, you still, <laughs> I like the steel types. You know, they look dope, yeah. even though it's an yeah. attack. I'm you like, know, I'm going for a look here. Absolutely, it's an aesthetic. It's sleek. It's cool, but also just like the way inspiration kind of works. At least the way I experience it from other games is like, okay, steel type Pokemon. What kind of actual gameplay mechanics could you base around the steel type abilities? Like, what would be interesting and cool for for how would you translate that? And that, that's kind of where I start when coming up with new ideas. It's like, how would you take something that isn't a thing and turn it into a thing? <laughs> it's a very vague way to say it. No, it, oh, it, yeah. it, hey, that's that's entertainment. Yeah, you know, that's <laughs> ideas like this. It's really funny i've come to appreciate how amorphous things can really be truly until they kind of naturally start gaining shape it's kind yeah. of like imagine how hard it would be for like a snowball to turn into a giant snowball rolling downhill on its own yeah it's yeah. literally just like that one little ting of inspiration hits the right thing and it just starts to tumble exactly you know? it's you it's interesting know until you try <laughs> yeah really we had a comment from chat wanting to know if the next yeah. game is about Clara. I and wish. I wish. That would be Clara, a really dope game. Clara is has to be there in the world. Clara needs to be there, so something's going to happen. Yeah. Gotta, I feel you like know. every Flight School product from now on should have Clara in it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Even if we'll it's here her. because she's really teeny and she's like just a fly, literally a fly on the wall. <laughs> she has to be yeah. there. She's so great. <laughs> well, and I like it because she's so mysterious. And that's I think yes. that plays into the whole aesthetic of the studio, too. Yeah. Clara is a mysterious, polite, excitable person, which is everything I strive to be, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I think you nailed it now. <laughs> <laughs> So you know, Ben, then you jumped, you jumped back to the oh, beginning yeah. of the game. For those of you who don't know Annika's motivations in the game, this is it. She like disappoints her dad um, by taking his hot rod out and making a fair Earth Bueller. <laughs> Let me see. I bet I can uh, get to the hot rod part. Let's see if I'm not. I'm learning the debug stuff. I'm honestly getting better at it. So, no, you're doing great. Think, you're doing anyway. great. Depends on if I, this uh, loads into a level or not, or if it stays black. So, uh, <laughs> who knows? Probably, if I'm there, we'll probably make a game about planes. That yeah. would be dope. 
Yeah. Oh, actually, would be I like pretty flight cool. sims stuff. I really do. Like, yeah. I, I'm a sucker for. Uh, oh, one of my favorite games was Crimson Skies. Do y'all remember oh, that game? Good. That you know, I don't even know if it was amazing or not, but man, that game made such an impression on me. Um, this is pretty cool. So this is the oh, aforementioned hot rod. Uh, yeah. That uh, Anne has taken out riding around against, well, I guess, unbeknownst to her father. Yes. Let's see. Took it out for a joyride. I love I the look of this thing. Yeah, it's like a, a really cool little um, pine cone machine. Yeah. <laughs> and that I love was... that the clothes come out. It's very eldritch. Well, that was one of the, the I mean, animating it, they... You know that that literally all I had was a rig and like a couple of words from Bo and Adam, so it was interesting <laughs> to come up with those elements where like, you know, how do they come out? I like the constant rotation, uh, you know, to give I, them a sense of power, like they're not disconnected or something. Yeah, you know? I also love mm. that they take a shape depending on which way you're going. Yes, like Just going forward versus staying still. That's a detail I really liked. Um, it looks yeah. awesome. As, as someone with a very layman's understanding of 3D assets, it seems like the rigging on something like that would be really insane. Am I like not as thinking about it right now? Well, I don't want to talk for both, but not probably as bad <laughs> as you think. Because <laughs> okay. mainly, uh, I, I knew enough that I wanted to. I didn't want to stress that out or make it way too complicated, basically, right? right? Gotcha. So really, I, honestly, in animating it, each single one of those has a, you know, a, a controller that goes along its center axis so that it can go straight out like it does here. You know, you brainiac. The camera you figured it out. <laughs> yeah. So really, it was just literally animating that one attribute to get out, and then uh, uh, for to give it a sense of power that rotation. Yeah. Heck you know? yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, just got a question in the chat about regarding the soundtrack. Honey, you should ask Fishcat. Uh, the soundtrack is actually available. Yeah, it's for all right. On final. You I'm can... gonna drop. I'm gonna drop a link in the chat. Yeah, for you should. Guys. Perfect. Yeah, I. I didn't mean to turn into an actual billboard for that, but I'm just really <laughs> excited because. I already I ordered also... mine. I unashamedly <laughs> ordered it. I ordered yeah. three copies. Like, oh, I, was, like, I, I just need. Them. I need extras just in case. Absolutely. I know they make good gifts. Yeah, they make good yeah. gifts. Uh, and also, Adam did some like uh, custom art oh. for the cover that you can hang on the. So I'm gonna hang one on the wall and then have one for the record player in the living room. Nice. <laughs> Me too. No. That's awesome. Nice. Oh man, I need to it's do that. It's so good. <laughs> I should probably order another one. See, this is how it happens. This Ooh. is how it happens. Yeah. Whoa, that is a very good question from uh, Jimitson in the in the in the chat as well. Um, yeah. So from what I understand, again, uh, Adam would be the one to answer this, but um, a lot of uh, inspiration came from Star Wars and mm -hmm. uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Like the the Ava units, their their kind of design was um, something Adam brought up a lot, and it's something that I really loved. Like I love the way that. Ava units look uh, in the show, and I also, you know, I have a hit. I I have worked on Star Wars games. I'm familiar with the the mechanics of uh, like the capital ship that was my responsibility on squadrons, and like there was a lot of that uh, in the discussion for how the mechs would kind of look and feel. And so, um, yeah, I think that that came across in a lot of the art. And Bevan, like you did so many like excellent animations that make the mechs feel really good to control like they feel like good vehicles to drive <laughs> uh, i mean it's i mean that was really my goal i'm glad that it came through you did and a great it's job kind of funny. <laughs> that's what i'm saying it, well thank you but it really is one of those things where it's it it feels it could be so isolating creating animations uh that that you like i know that these animations are going to change based on the needs of the gameplay, right? right so, yeah. in a way, it's not sticking with one idea, but getting an impactful thing that I know can change and stay valuable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or to stay yeah. like salient. It's like I know it's only going to do one thing, and there is a an allowance of range where this animation will look good, be it slowed down or sped up. You know, so what's the best thing to stay in there? So no matter what Bo or you or anybody needs to do, it stays as, you know, as cool as possible. Like the gra you know, the weight of everything stays feels right, right? Yeah. Like animating, animating just this jump. When I animated it originally, it was probably about three times as high as this. 
Right. Uh, you yeah. know, and it's just like seeing like the how the fall goes into it and how the landing kind of still has impact. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. just really cool to see. Yeah, because especially for something like a jump where the player has a lot of agency over how fast that plays. If you tap and jump, it's playing yeah. fast. Over right? and over so, and over again. Exactly. You know, it's got to look good. Yeah, so being able to maintain those really like crystal clear animations that feel good with like the little sound when you land, the click and everything. Like, yeah. I think that's that's what that to me is one of the most important parts of creating a vehicle that feels good to drive. And so yes. like the I animations th- and the mechanics being in sync was like really, I think it, we did good. <laughs> no, I think you're right. I mean, really, it's it's that's actually kind of one of the things that I really like. I, I totally was a bit overwhelmed with the control scheme initially starting the game. But I mean, let's just be honest, that's me no matter what game I'm playing. Um, But, you know, it's one of those things that I really like the moment later in gameplay. You're like, oh, I've become skillful at this. Yeah. You know, like this was hard and now I'm juking and jumping and warping and bouncing like a crazy pine cone, you know? And it's just really cool to have that like sense of accomplishment through just a gameplay element, not like a level or, you know, or Absolutely. an award. It's like just, you know, feeling like you're a pilot or a better pilot later yeah. in the game. I just feel like it really comes through. It's really uh, cool. A- absolutely. Like, I apologize if I've already rambled about this on a stream before, I probably but I think. About oh, yes. <laughs> um, but I think, like, when I think back to some of our early conversations about how the mechanics were going to work for the player abilities uh, versus like buggo abilities and mm-hmm. the kind of relationship between them. Uh, we took some inspiration, again, kind of taking something from a completely different genre and being like, what do we like about that? Uh, and how could we potentially translate that into our setting um, was uh, the feeling you get when you get your full rotation off in an MMO like World of Warcraft, for example, where you yeah. have your list of abilities and you go through them at the right timing and then you get big results on screen that gives you a lot of like positive feedback. So that was something that we were like, okay, if we were to, uh, let's say we have all these abilities and you toggle between them with you, you know, your trigger buttons and you get to do, uh, you know, you break squib a bunch of character, a bunch of buggos, you drop a pull sphere and then while you pull things together, you drop a bubble that needles away and like getting a full rotation off and out maneuvering the bugs and countering them at every turn. I think Mm -hmm. kind of captures that feeling a little bit. It's something that plays a lot of MMO. Like, (laughs) oh no. feels really good to do that full rotation, get those rewards, get a ton of resources, mm-hmm. knock a whole cluster of bugs off at the same time. Like that feels yeah. really satisfying. So that was something that we had set out early on of like, this is part of our vision for what we'll feel, we want to feel good in the combat, what we hope comes across. <laughs> it's, I, I, well, I think it definitely worked because I definitely find myself I'm one of those people that separates the Skittles by color. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so like, I will be like, okay, everybody here is knocked over. All right, come yeah. along, my little babies. We're all gonna go on a trip, and we're all gonna meet your friends over here. You know, I like <laughs> this part of the fun for me is like literally gathering every bug on the map into just one giant pile. Absolutely. You know, I, there's yeah. so much joy in that. I, like I love it like feeling like I have the ability. Oh, okay, then that happens. <laughs> but, you know, I like that, you know, when you learn something, it's not just riding a bike, but you're like cruising, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm really, I am in control of this thing. I, I feel like it's a very satisfying sense of that when you get those combos off as well, you know? Yeah, exactly. I know what I'm doing. Exactly. Like the feeling of kind of becoming an ace pilot by the end of the campaign mm-hmm. is kind of, our, you know, we, we hope most people end up yeah. doing so that, because we had some, some like, post-game challenge stuff that you can do where it's just like hordes of bugs where you can mm-hmm. keep doing alpha aphids for just for fun just to see how many you can handle type of thing and yeah. like i find those challenges kind of fun and interesting but you know they're also entirely opt-ins you don't you don't ah. have to you don't have to get good if you want to just kind of meditatively go through this game yeah. and just kind of you, know, you can pick it apart at your own pace but it's still like it's uh, I, it has that sense of kind of like zombie game ish where i've got that like rush or no no you know what it reminds me of is more like doom in that kind of arena style combat sort of thing right where it's like yeah that's a lot of demons and then you know (laughs) let's just get one shotgun off in that guy's eyeball you know and focus on that one thing first 
you know, and then you kind of like start picking the situation apart and it evolves as the type of enemies change or even like the uh, the more that you get out. I like that sense yeah. where it's like, okay, I'm sweeping up. I can do a really cool move on this guy just for my own sick satisfaction, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's, um, it's fun. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple moments um, that it started to come across when we were still in development. Oh, no. We were just like, oh, like, so encouraged. Like, we got, we're doing it. It's happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's just Bye, that you can't really fight that satisfaction. You know, like, when yeah. it happens... I mean, we're obviously, if, obviously it's our game, so we're obviously biased. Oh, but yeah, it's it. I can't ignore like the success of that, you know, because it's really yeah. fun to get lost in something and to be a part of what you get lost in. I like Absolutely. this cutscene. Me too. <laughs> well, that's a good good question from Gavin. Were there oh, any yeah. other, other buggo archetypes that the team wanted to add? Uh, yes, there were many. <laughs> we, we we essentially had like. We had a lot of ideas for bugs. We had a, a a game design document, and we had a section that was just called like bug ideas, and we would just like write in any which thing that we could think of. And there was a few ideas in there that we talked about that we really liked, but we didn't end up bringing into development because we, you know, we only had so much time for production. And we kind of, after we built, uh, I forget who the first bug that we kind of built from start to finish uh, was. Um, but after we did that, we had kind of a good sense of how long it would take us per bug. And so we, before we even kind of went down the path of half building them and figuring out what we, uh, what we could or couldn't do, we were just like, we, we were aware of our limitations. So we didn't end up pursuing them. But one that I uh, thought was kind of an interesting idea was, uh, I think we called it like a hex beetle or something, like a magic bug that kind of modified the battlefield in some way. We're like, you needed to uh, drag a resource over to it in order for it to leave an area. Otherwise, it wouldn't leave, and it would like mm -hmm. block an area, uh, or that it would like modify the bugs on the on the field somehow, like give them a shield or something like that. Um, there's there's some ideas like that kind of floating around, and those would have been. Uh, I, let's say we had two years of production, probably would be in the game. But <laughs> hey, um, two years of animation time, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's not a long list of things buried in the back of my psyche that I would make better. You of know, course. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I really like this always... moment though. This music oh, yeah. really turned out great. Makes me happy. And can but... I just say, the music from Nature Boy Flaco is just really the perfect oh, yeah. tonality for the game. I'm just so happy that we could work with him. Me too. Yeah. He did such an amazing job of just yeah. capturing the essence of of all the scenes, the, the emotional highs and lows of the game, mm. and even just the kind of tranquility of being out in the world is just like... A hundred percent. It was one of those things where I, I'm re reflecting on it now from the moment that Bo and Adam sent me like just one of his songs that had the vibe. You know, yeah. hey, we're talking to this guy to get it literally ordering the vinyl like i've been excited yeah. about everything that i've heard from him you know what i mean and i still feel like i'm discovering cool new stuff like that awesome video of him like with pan flutes on a rock yeah you know, on a persian rug in berlin recording our <laughs> soundtrack how cool is that it's so you awesome know? like <laughs> I tell you what, if I had a rock and a pan flute, it's not going to sound like that, you know? <laughs> oh, you did so, good, Seven. I'd get there eventually, you know? <laughs> if you put, what is it, enough me's in a room with a rock and a pan flute, we'll eventually make a soundtrack. <laughs> is that the saying? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly but, that. I mean, it honestly, it's just, it's hard to, it's hard to overstate how much I feel like it builds the experience, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. Yeah. It's really great. It's mesmerizing, you know? Pet bug. Laura, how could you? Cricket is right there. <laughs> <laughs> Cricket is your pet bug. Who's your BFF? <laughs> I think, yeah, it would have been, that would have been the one thing that all, oh, yeah, he is old. Um, he's a field of crickets. So I think, I think the idea is that uh, Jerry, your dad, has like a, a far, like a field of cows, but they're crickets. <laughs> I, li I like imagining, in a way, they're like crows, where Jerry just fed him out of pity, yeah, and, now and now he just, just has around. these crickets that don't, that they're always around, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, that one's got a bum leg, I better fix it, you know? Yeah, now just... oh, this one needs a place to stay. Yeah. yeah. They're just a part oh, of the farm now. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like if, uh, 
you know, because hindsight is twenty twenty. J Justin, I'm not answering that. Oh, I don't Justin. understand this comment. Milk? If you can find a cricket nipple, you can find cricket milk. Okay. <laughs> so go Whoa. for it, Justin. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. I had to know what cricket milk was. Just, I'm just very confused. If you don't think if you don't think that 2022 isn't gonna bring us cricket milk, you're out of your mind. That's true. Okay. You, you know, I do have world. I do have some dried crickets over here in my kitchen that I have just sat here for a while. If, if you I'll squeeze them hard enough, you'll get some milk out of it. For Mortimer. <laughs> oh, that's a great point, Mel. Yeah, that's his food. I didn't think about that. Oh. I do have an actual terrarium full of crickets because now that I take well, care of a lizard, I need to take care of crickets as well. So I have 50 little roommates I wasn't planning on, but they, you know, they live here with us. <laughs> Look, if, if you get to milk in, I'll get to finding investors, okay? Okay, I'll see we'll what I can do. We'll make this happen, you know? <laughs> Move over, Simply Almond. <laughs> it's Simply Cricket time now. It's Simply Cricket. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> you know, and you're, 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 I'm glad that the cricket only makes a short appearance because I can't stand piloting the cricket. As adorable as <laughs> it is, it is yeah, a very was, difficult thing to pilot. That was definitely part of the design because, like, we it was a design decision. Also, it's just we thought it was funny. <laughs> we I were like, like the, okay. Oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna do a quick ramble of like the um the kind of classic gameplay element of you start off in like the overpowered mech. You've got all these amazing abilities. You can blink. You can use a pulse sphere. You can dash. All this yeah. stuff in your dad's mech, and then you lose it, and then you're brought down to. But arguably the worst way to tra like you go from driving a, <laughs> an A wing from Star Wars to like riding a uh, a donkey. <laughs> like he's yeah. just not he's not very smooth. He doesn't quite go straight when you're trying to like go in this direction. He might veer yeah. off this way a little bit. Like he's <laughs> he's this little derp derpy guy. <laughs> We're coming up to an opportunity for sh me to show you all my favorite sound design in the game. Oh all oh right. no! <laughs> Is everybody ready? Is the music yeah. back in? Hold on. I'm ready. Wait for it. Oh, it didn't do it. There you go. There it is. Oh, no. Oh, oh there it goes. There was. <laughs> Twins, the little echo again. <laughs> Terrible. The little echo is, it's like the echo adds that, oh, I don't know if he made it out of that, you know? That's <laughs> that's where I really feel like it helps. Oh, it's so hard here, too. <laughs> Bevan. Bevan. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> playing right now. I had to show you that sound. There are people who are very skilled. I never experienced that. So now we have it captured for all posterity. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It always really yeah. freaked me out. Oh, sorry, it was. Oh, I was just gonna say that's that's the, that's the sound. Yeah. Break I sound of my heart breaking. <laughs> it's the, it's the Wilhelm scream of our game. <laughs> I you just know? wanna point out in the chat they're saying stop killing the robot. It's a cricket, y'all. Yeah, cricket it's a cricket. Alive. It's a live thing. That's right. No mercy. Cricket has feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I do love getting into the cores mechs as well. And yeah. just that little comparison of like what it's like when, you know, an early mech versus a, a, a later version core mech, if you will. Yeah, yeah. like get up. Dad's mech is a really cool car. Yeah. Dad's mech is like, it's a car. And then your junker is like a garbage car until it becomes like better right. than Bumblebee. your dad's car. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> But yeah, get Poppy out of is here. like a nice, a nice average. A Camry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can't. I think like no, no, no. Reliable. I think a Volkswagen. No, a Volkswagen Beetle. It's oh, there you, you know, go. It's Aww. not yeah. a bad car, but it's very particular. You know, it's like it's it is what it is. And it I requires think, a special ah, core. <laughs> yes. Special parts. <laughs> I think that Mitch has, has clipped oh, her no. cricket <laughs> jumping. Oh no, <laughs> off the cliff, oh gosh. <laughs> I had to know. Everything lives forever on the internet. I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> get me, get out of here. You know, so Clara's ah. mech copy is an unusual scale, I think, compared to the other mechs. Does it, is it smaller? It is a little bit smaller. Okay. Um, I guess it's not as vertical, right? Like it's yeah. Like yeah. Kind of it's flat. very stubby compared to even Ravenwood's. Yeah, like Ravenwood's is also like kind of round with small uh, 
little stompy legs, but it does have that extra like kind of point at the top. Yeah. And Poppy's just like really small. I also just I love the way Poppy's wings open. They're just yeah. like, little beetle shells. <laughs> I want a Poppy yeah. too, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> I let's see. Poppies looks like they would smell like incense, you know. Ooh, yeah. Not, yeah. Not this, maybe it's good incense. No judgment on incense. Oh yeah, I enjoy. Let's get out of here, bugs. Not Nang Champa. Oh, uh, that's what I have. <laughs> Nang Champa. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. It's a fine incense. Ooh. Question in the chat: Can we add 3D sound to PS4 control? I don't know if that's oh. something that we have um, bandwidth for, but we'll definitely like. Discuss. <laughs> yeah. Would be Probably nice. Trying to make it the best it can, but yeah. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of requests. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of little things like that that we would love to be able to do. But it all really, you know, for a small team, it kind of just comes down to our time and our budget that's in scope for us. But yes, <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> I, I that scene with the alpha aphid coming in it's yeah. literally just like the base model of the aphid head that i'm if it was a hand puppet i would just be shaking it in front of a light basically <laughs> having <laughs> that like stomp given with the with the camera shake and all that you know hey that's movie magic you right know? i love that sometimes the old way is the best way you know it's so effective and i <laughs> I, I love seeing like even even like after so many months of working on it, after we had that final acid in, in my memory, because like, we worked for almost a year with all the kind of placeholder stuff, the uh, alpha aphid like placeholder thing was just kind of a cylinder that we had translated to like float across the screen. <laughs> 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 just like little moments like that during development are so so special. I love those memories. <laughs> of, like, when it changes, the big scary moment. You're like, <laughs> yeah. well, I love. I wish we had a picture of the uh, water striders. You know, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, I don't <laughs> I don't have any in my graphics queue. I can send you some if you want. Yeah, send me some, Mel. <laughs> I think I, they're great. I love stand that. in stand in geo is always fun. Yeah, I made some stand in placeholder bugs for uh, a feature that we ended up cutting down the line, but it was just a. We just needed something to kind of yeah. represent, like you. Yeah, I remember uh, doing all those animations for those water striders. I wonder what yeah. happened to them. So, no. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> we, we ended up; uh, those ended up being uh, an out of scope uh, ability that we kind of discussed having at the end of the game, and we got pretty far of like, I think we're gonna do it, and then, you know, time constraints and production, yep. and game dev stuff. We're like, story. okay. Yeah, and you know, anytime we cut something, it's always hard, but it's usually the conversation of this isn't gonna make the game. That is like so much better that it's worth the cost of it. So the cost being like greater than the gains was is usually the reason for it. And then there's also design reasons that like just didn't really fit anymore in the game uh, yeah. overall. But we made these derpy little. I just used some like unreal base assets uh, and shapes to make these like little cylinders with big googly eyes and like big cylinder arms. And I just had them placed around so that you could see uh, you know the idea of what the that beat in the level was going to be. And there is still one hidden in the world, but I'm not telling anyone where it is. <laughs> Wait, I do, I do have a picture of it. I won't spoil I it. We'll, yeah. we'll save it for a little bit. That's funny. Let's see, break. So this is the first time we're customizing in here. Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah. Uh, pretty much fixing up the Junker, which I... The, so the Junker is the rig that I animated everything on. Because uh, yes. it was the, you know, it, it, since it was the first one, and it kind of had the most representative anatomy of what all of the other kind of custom pieces were going to be. Oh. So this is what every every jump and hop was all animated on this guy right here. Yeah, oh. it's amazing. Also, thank you so much for saying uh, pop cream. It's so sweet. <laughs> Where's oh oh? Thank you so much. That is really nice. And yeah, the sound. I mean, it's. I can't get over the soundtrack. Me too. It's just. I feel like it, there really is. It's there's a, there's a certain kind of hindsight with just launching this game and thinking about creature and really seeing how this game feels like an evolution, but like a natural evolution. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. It's like it, it. It just. It feels like it's all in the same. Uh, 
I don't know. Well, it's all made of the same studio. You know what I mean? <laughs> like in a good way. It feels like a like a, a our, a, our body catalog, a body of work. Exactly. There you our go. Catalog is building. <laughs> so it's exciting. We're getting ready to bundle both Creature in the Well and Stonefly together for. Oh Steam. really? I had no yeah. idea. Well, that's awesome. Put, here, here's the small announcement. There you go. We'll we'll make Yay. a big deal out of it later. But we have to name the bundle, and that's a really difficult thing to do, right? So, I mean, you know, any suggestions in the chat, feel free to free to drop them. But like, we'd like to do something better than like game bundle as the title. Yeah. Right? So I mean, like, maybe it's like play in the well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or like I was like maybe it's the wind and energy bundle or like you know uh, yeah, 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 That yeah, sounds yeah. like a really sick Pokemon deck. I it does. Does. <laughs> Oh, this I like is... the chat chat suggested beautiful games bundle. Thank you. Yes. That is a good one. I like that one. Pilot and Pilot license. license. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hey. The flight school bundle. <laughs> I like this is one license. of my this is one of my favorite animations in the game. That I did. Oh yeah, the little leg. Here. Literally, I just like a tiny that. little cycle, but it just feels so satisfying. It's really funny because you don't. I, there are certain animations where I felt like the impact would be so much bigger. Not well, the impact was what it needed to be because we only make what we need to in a way. Right. But it's like there are things that make the game, and this silly little thing that I did. You know, Bo, I should make the, you know, like, it, we just had it rotating, and it's like, can I just do a little, you know, little <laughs> step by step? And yeah. it just gives it life, you know? It's one more thing that makes it more into a world and less of a game, you know? Absolutely. It's like, just that, how would it rotate when they're not in it, and they're on these platforms that are scattered around the world, you know? Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I absolutely agree. I, I'm really glad that this is something that people are, like, noticing and appreciating yeah, about it, because it's here. just like... Uh, it was one of my favorite additions that you added as well. Like when I saw it, I, I yelled out loud when I was like, <laughs> we were like doing a play test and I was customized my mech and I rotated and I was like, oh! Yeah. So I love, good. I mean, it's, it's, it just, it, I love it. I love that kind of stuff. It just adds so much. This is probably the other place where I feel like the impact mm -hmm. and the use came together the best because I love yeah. uh, this is beautiful the, animation. the tip stuff. Yeah. yeah. It just, it, you know, it's kind of one of those things where I was thinking about it, where it's like having it, it feels weird to me that, I don't know, that you're like out in a tent with these giant bugs and it's this big, scary world, but like, this is a really safe, quiet place, yeah. you know? And yeah. like, she's obviously safe and comfortable and it making that, that kind of central to, I don't know how she feels. And like, there's something going through her head, you know? Yeah. So I really feel like a lot of, what's that? Oh, I was going to ask you, did you use any particular reference for these moments with Annika? Uh, yes. I, it was a, it's a combination of my girlfriend and myself. Oh. Um, yeah. So the initially, the walk-in and the sit was Jenna. She w did the walk-in and sit and the bounce. And then I basically directed her a little bit on that. And then, like, the, st the stretch thing or whatever, like, that's mm -hmm. all me. <laughs> that's but so good, Bevin. <laughs> it's it's all got to end up looking like Annika, you know. Yeah, so as long yeah. as it's in the right place, uh, but there's definitely a, like Jenna was pretty much anytime there's a character like interaction at all, it was Jenna and I shooting reference. So that's it's so kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's off in the middle of the day, and we can just you know go shoot some reference. It's nice also to have somebody to hold the camera sometimes, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I think I am ready for a mission. Heck yeah. Yeah. What's, is there anything y'all would like me to jump to or highlight that we should talk about? Good question. Oh. That is a good question. I didn't really think about it. <laughs> I, mean, you know, I mean, I'll just, this is one of my favorite places. If we just want to talk a little bit, I mean, this is. Sure. I'm our, so glad you came here. This is exactly yeah. where I wanted to go. Excellent. I feel like, um, it's funny, like, I always have looked at this level as the least beautiful level, but the more I time I've been playing in it, the more beautiful it is. It's, yeah. I agree completely. There's something oceanic about it. It feels mm -hmm. really good. You know, it's kind of like, uh, you wouldn't imagine, like, a, like a foggy northwestern shoreline to be pretty compared right. to an Acapulco beach. But yeah. really, it's like, wow, this is gorgeous, you know? It's just kind of has a certain danger and, uh, 
sense of depth to it that I really like. Yeah. You know. Well, you guys yeah. know me. Like, I'm so attracted to like bright, garish colors. Yeah. Like, like a bunch of pinks and oranges and purples. Oh, of course. And, like, Clearly. I have been. Yeah, I have been so like you know delighted by this level because it has so much textural like stuff to get into. Yeah, it's also I kind of like where in the sense of color and also kind of what it's putting forward. It's like, you know, a briar patch in a field with these, like, it really reminds me a lot of kind of like a New Englandy or like a rather an England hedgerow kind of vibe, you know? Yeah. And I like the mutedness and the, there's not like crazy bright colors just for, for no good reason. It stays yeah. super interesting with a very muted kind of palette, you know? Uh, yeah. It just kind of proves that, you know, you can make something look really cool without splattering a bunch of really bright colors on it, you know? So. Yeah, exactly. Like, this is one of the areas that when I had asked Adam initially a little bit about, like, the tone of the level, because when I was going in to start white boxing, I wanted to get a sense of, like, should your player feel exposed? Should they feel claustrophobic? Like, should, they, should it be more closed in? Like, uh, what's kind of the vibe? And the, the general idea is like, yeah, very briar patch. Like, uh, a normal sized person just wouldn't be able to get in here. There'd be too many brambles, but it's still uh, kind of like an oasis. So like the entire like ring around this area is all really big scaled up brambles that would be like, you know, the size of your fist pretty much as a regular sized person. And inside is all these little micro clusters of smaller brambles, this would be like the brambles still growing into their full potential. But because you're so tiny, they just create like these little arenas. And then we had the idea to kind of use some of the art assets to create paths to bridge together these arenas. And in the early stages, like this level was just arenas. And then like one bramble kind of connected them. And then we started creating like, as, as I played it more and got more feedback on it, and some of the abilities started to come, you know, uh, become more clear of like how exactly how far can you glide from your regular jump from level one to level three and then try to straight play uh, measurements for the platforms to make sense for that. So there's areas where it's easier because we're expecting you to have like a level one jump area. Mm -hmm. But if you come back with like a level three jump, you can traverse a lot faster. So it's just like kind of uh, finding that balance. I also in this patrol included a lot of really high points. So if you uh, yeah. are still kind of getting your bearings and you don't want to get lost, you can always go to any of the uh, checkpoint areas which are usually up pretty high and then you can get a good vantage point of where to float down to next and then if you want to start exploring from there that's like i figured a good way for folks to start kind of getting their feet wet with moving around the world and traversing and kind of exploring because you have to when, when a, whenever you you know start a new game like you were saying ben I, I do the same where i'm like i'm not really sure how to control it i don't really know where the boundaries are what i'm supposed yeah. to push so this area is very much meant to kind of get players comfortable in the mech and start right. teaching you how here's to a, here's a place fly. to fight here's a place to fight here's a cool thing you have to traverse that yeah. kind of deal right yeah, exactly yeah. i like that and doing it in a really compelling and interesting way to start the game off too yeah, you know, I love, like it's, I love rambles. <laughs> it, it's so effective in those design choices, and it just, it, but it doesn't feel like I'm being trained in any way. You know, yeah, it's really cool yeah. that those elements are so uh, ingrained in it. You know, yeah, trying to find a cool feel, outlook. Yeah, I wanted it to feel like relaxing while le Mel Brambles. <laughs> Mel Brambles. <laughs> exactly, Mutar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes, uh, and we wanted it to feel like. A, a place where you could learn and stretch and literally spread your wings a little bit without feeling um, the pressure like you have to learn something because there's like a big boss fight coming or anything. It's like low pressure, relaxing, but you're still learning. You're still being taught how to explore and traverse a little bit. It's a little bit more passive um, because there's no like time limit, right? You can spend as much time here as you like. <laughs> I really like this, this introduction as well, literally, Nightlight Briar. Um, I kind of, it's a really cool way, one of the things I really like in world building is where you give a really great example of what can be everywhere else in the world, you right. know what I mean? Yes. So like this is such a great, I mean it's a very striking image with these familiar looking kind of mushrooms built yeah. into like this obvious kind of city you know i want to know what's going on in here i want to know about the food court you know what i mean yeah yeah it's a really <laughs> cool place I, I imagine that i could go and visit this place and like it just helps me when i hear about chantrell 
I imagine, oh, what, what, what a Chantrell looks like, you know, if this is what I have to build from in my imagination, you know? Yeah. It's very, it's a very evocative world. It's really cool. Yeah, I, I like the little town vignettes um, that you find the patrols of just like, mm -hmm. what, what does a, a house look like? And then <laughs> mech being kind of small to it, and you're even smaller inside your mech. So if you were walking around this town, it would be like a big city from Annika's perspective, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You know what the vibe I totally get is the space stations on uh, the Expanse, like Ooh, series yeah. and stuff like that. Like there's <gasps> oh, something, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? There's something about the kind of like, and it may just be literally because it, how expensive would it be to put a whole bunch of little people walking around outside, yeah. you know? <laughs> but I like that it kind of feels odd, like an interior in yeah. this world where a rainstorm would literally destroy somebody's house. Yeah. You know, it kind of makes sense to have these more tough kind of borough-esque uh, cities and houses and things like that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, in the marsh area where you were before, there, yeah. um, there is rain. And, like, so the, the structures of people that live there are, like, inside big hollowed-out logs, right? Like, they have yeah. to be protected from the elements because it's a little bit more devastating when you're, like, half the size of a pinky fingernail <laughs> yeah it's basically like getting an olympic pool's worth of water fall yeah. on you <laughs> at any given moment you know pretty much yeah let's see i'm trying to think uh, at this point i think do you think we ought to wrap it up we can yeah. wrap it up I'm yeah let's wrap it up oh there's one more question in the chat though oh yeah yeah, yeah is there a night mode that we can use a flashlight in the machine well, <laughs> oh, that'd be um, cool. So there, uh, there isn't a night mode. It's pretty much whatever time of day it is when you're in the level is is what it is. Um, but there is, I believe, there is a small uh, uh, glow around the mech. So if you're in an area where it's a little bit darker, you should be able to see a little bit of illumination around the mech. Nice. Oh yeah, here you go. You can go yeah. under that log. And oh. See if you onto the log or under the log? Under. Under that that shadow there. See if there's a little glow. Under. I can't remember if we. Over to the left, Beth. I'm over to the left. I'm and sorry. Down. I didn't know where I was yeah. trying to go. Ah, yeah. God! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where are I? Uh, over here? Backseat driving over here. Yeah, go over to that shadowy area. Right here? Yeah. Oh. Hey, kids, you want to buy some pollen? <laughs> I can't really tell. <laughs> it's really fresh. But anyway, this is about as dark as the game gets. Um, yeah. Like, lighting-wise. <laughs> Get out of here, you guys. There's not really a ton of people. I could just sit here and play this all night. Which I, is know. I know. I love good... that. I love yeah. that we're ending the stream on a long snout, though. It's pretty great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys. I mean, all the bugs are annoying in their own special way, I feel like. Yeah. I agree. You know what? <laughs> I'm just looking at I just love how this came together. Like, look at the screen right now. Like, <laughs> the, the, the mech it's pops. Art so hard it's a wonderful wash of green that fades and shows the depth in the background with the, the saturation ah oh, it's so good yeah. i love our game <laughs> unabashedly well yeah. i want to thank everybody for joining yeah. us tonight on the yeah. stream and hanging out talking about bugs with us yes. we are on discord we hang out there a whole lot you can talk with us if you have more questions about the game um, yeah, we're going to be us, doing please. some cool stuff in Discord in the upcoming week. So please come join our community. Yeah. Say hi. Um, we are also on social media pretty much everywhere. On Twitter, we're at Stonefly Game. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram, too. And, um, of course, we would really love for you to play the game. It is available pretty much everywhere you play games. It's on Steam. It's on Nintendo Switch. On the PlayStation series, the Xbox series, the Epic Game Store. It's on uh, GOG, GOG. I don't really actually know which way you say it. Do you guys know? <laughs> I don't know. I just yeah, know I it's that. Of, I think it's kind of like a Syrah versus a Shiraz. Thank you. know, you. one's right in Australia. That's all I no. know for sure. So. Yeah. yeah. And don't forget that the soundtrack is available on most streaming services right now. And then also um, there is a limited edition vinyl. Um, I dropped a link in the chat earlier, but if you would like a link, you can come in Discord and I'll send it over to you. Um, the orders for that are going to close in the coming weeks. So we yes. really want to get as many pre-orders in as possible so we can have a nice big run of vinyl. Yeah! Yeah. Uh, Toaster, I, I'll have to tell you, Shiraz is correct in Australia, 
but that's literally the only place on the planet that it's correct, as I, I understand it. Anyway, thanks for the clarity. Of it. <laughs> thank you all for visiting. Yeah, uh, yeah you this is awesome. everybody. I want to keep doing this kind of stuff, so yeah. let's keep making dope video games. Heck yeah! Yeah. Thank yeah. You guys. Awesome. Bye, guys. Bye.